Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of these books, Jazz Piano Fundamentals and Playing Solo Jazz Piano. And today I want to share with you the difference between four important historical jazz piano styles. Those styles are ragtime, stride piano, boogie woogie, and honky tonk. Look at my fancy PowerPoint over here. <laughs> um, and my hope is that as I describe these styles. Not only will you gain understanding for these styles, but you'll gain appreciation for the incredible way that jazz pianists throughout history have solved big problems related to the music. The first problem that I think is really important to think about is what I think about as the mango problem. Now, I love mangoes, but here each mango is representing a different musical element. And in most jazz, we have three essential musical elements to care about. We have the bass, We have the chords, and we have the melody. Again, mangoes are not a problem, but three mangoes is a problem because we have two hands. These are actually my hands. I took that photo. I don't know if you can see the resemblance. So we've got three mangoes and two hands. I'm no mathematician, but it presents this difficult problem. We're going to start our historical journey with this man, John Philip Sousa. I'll give you the big view. So take a look at his handsome face. He was a pop star at the time. Not in our sense, of course, but he was the Billie Eilish or the Rihanna or Beyonce or whoever you want to think about. Band music was really important in the late 1800s. And the reason actually is kind of interesting. Historically, there were many bands formed for the military for the Civil War. When the war ended and peacetime came, those bands morphed into municipal bands that played at city events and marching bands, which we know today. In fact, Sousa invented something called the Sousaphone, which was a marching version of a tuba. Even if you've never heard of John Philip Sousa, if you're American, you've probably heard this piece, the Stars and Stripes Forever March. It's a patriotic piece, and if you've never heard it before, this is probably the most famous theme. famous theme and jazz pianists want to play it because we want to be liked um, and we want to make money playing the songs that you like. But again, we have this mango problem. If you remember, John Philip Sousa, he's got this huge band and so he can get piccolos to play the melody. Right? He can get French horns to play this, the chords in the middle and he can get his newly invented magical instrument, the sousaphone, to play bass. So how do we do this on piano? Well, brilliant pianists of the late 1800s put two mangoes in one hand and the left hand alternated back and forth between the bass and the chords. And we frequently call this a stride style left hand because we're going back and forth so far that it's almost the length of a person's stride when they're walking. So let's hear now Stars and Stripes Forever with this stride style left hand. So this almost sounds like what we know as ragtime, but not quite. And the reason it's not quite is because ragtime actually comes from the term ragged time because it sounded to early listeners to ragtime in the late 1800s like the right hand and left hand actually weren't together. And that's because they're using syncopation. If these notes are on the beat, then syncopation is coming in on what we call the off beats, in between the beats. time uses this particular type of syncopation called a hemiola. I always associate that word with hemisphere. They have the same H-E-M-I root, which means division. And the technical definition for hemiola is when we have a rhythmic grouping that doesn't fit cleanly into our main meter. 
In ragtime, the easiest way to think about this is that even though the left hand is strongly in groups of two, one, two, 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 one, two, 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 two the right hand is frequently playing these triangles, these groups of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And so you get this two against three kind of rhythm. One, two, three, two, two, three. I can count threes with the right hand or twos with the left hand, right? One, two, three, 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 one, two, 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 three, two, four, two. Very rhythmically interesting, rich, and complex. Which brings us to a piece many of you probably know, which is the maple leaf rag. If you're a pianist, chances are you've tried at least to play this piece. It's beautiful. It's a really well-known main theme. second theme, but it's such a great one to demonstrate this ragtime style. You can hear the left hand in stride style, and the right hand playing these three note groupings. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. term, which is stride piano. So I've said that we have a stride style left hand in ragtime, but stride piano is its own style. And to understand why pianists invented this style, we need to go back to the Roaring Twenties. And again, what a great picture. You can see that the Roaring Twenties was a great time to be a pianist because there was lots of work. There were these speakeasies. They probably didn't have full bands coming in all the time. So they were often hiring pianists. And not only were they hiring pianists, but they were staying open so late because nobody knew that they were in existence, so they didn't have to close at 2 a.m. or whatever the traditional time is. And so this presented a huge opportunity for, stride, for uh, pianists, but it also presented a challenge. You know, if you're starting to play at 10 p.m. and then you have to play all the way until 4 a.m., that is a long gig. And even great pianists probably didn't have enough repertoire to cover that entire gig. So as pianists, what do we start doing? We start stretching things out with improvisation. If I'm playing the maple leaf rag, of course I'll play the original theme first. Everybody wants to hear it. But then I'll repeat this and maybe I'll play a variation, an improvised variation on that theme. And then I'll do it again and I'll improvise a different variation. times as long. And I don't have to play a bunch of short four, four minute pieces. I could play longer 10 or 12 minute pieces. And this helps me go for those six hours that I might need to play. So I want to play you one of my favorite stride style pieces. This is Ain't Misbehaven by Fats Waller. And you're going to hear me play the main theme. Now, contrary to ragtime, I've never received a fully written out piece of music for this. This I would play off a lead sheet. If you're not familiar with the term, a lead sheet is where we just get melody and chords. That means that everything that I'm doing with my left hand is mine. It's not something that Fats Waller composed. It's probably similar to what Fats Waller did. We all have the same elements of style, but I'll also play it a little bit different each time. So here's Ain't Misbehavin. I'm just gonna play you a short version so that you can hear the stride piano style. <laughs> Thank you. 
stride piano chord. So just to review, ragtime and stride piano might sound the same to a lot of listeners because they have these same two principal elements. They have a stride style left hand and they have syncopation, particularly these hemiolas in the right hand. But the big difference is actually just in type. Ragtime is composed music, whereas stride piano is mostly improvised music. And a lot of historians make a division between ragtime and stride piano and think of ragtime as more of an outgrowth of classical music and stride piano as more of the beginnings of jazz. While those two styles were incredibly popular in places like New Orleans, Washington DC, New York, Boston, all up the Eastern seaboard, in the American Midwest, there is a different jazz piano style that was taking hold known as Boogie Woogie. Here you see two of the Boogie Woogie greats, Albert Ammons and Need Lux Lewis. And Boogie Woogie has a very different left hand than stride piano. It's also a very challenging left hand, but in a different way. So stride piano, of course, the challenge was these leaps. With Boogie Woogie, the challenge is speed and coordination. So in stride piano, we play four notes in the left hand per bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In Boogie Woogie, we play eight. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can't even really count that fast. One of the results of this, because that left hand bass is so busy, we have to trade one of those mangoes over to the right hand. Now that right hand is gonna hold the chords. So let me play you Stars and Stripes Forever in a boogie woogie style. stride piano. We're not done with boogie woogie, but I want to go to this last term, which is honky tonk, because there's a lot of overlap. Now, honky tonk isn't really a musical style. A honky tonk, historically, was a musical venue in the American Midwest that was frequented by cattle rangers and people involved in the cattle trade. And the honky tonk would host vaudeville shows that had boogie woogie piano, blues of all kinds, honky tonk, and especially country music. And you find a lot of people in country music talking about their roots as being in these honky tonk spaces. Now for pianists, the biggest association we have with the honky tonk is beat up <laughs> awful pianos, right? These were not snooty social clubs. These were places where cattle ranchers went to blow off some steam. And so the pianos were not exactly well taken care of. And a lot of boogie woogie pianists who played in these honky tonks actually ended up kind of preferring these beat up pianos because there is something expressive when you have a warped soundboard and you have some broken strings and each note's a little bit different. And if you're playing the blues, there's something that feels really authentic and expressive about that. So my piano is not pristine, but I want to simu- but it's not quite <laughs> as bad as this piano. And I want to simulate what happens for a honky tonk piano. So I'm gonna use really, really cutting edge technology of putting a bunch of pens and pencils onto the strings of the piano. And while I do that, I'm gonna share with you uh, the piece that I'm gonna play, which is called Pine Tops Boogie Woogie. And this is really historically important because it's the first piece that used the term boogie woogie in the title. It's also pretty interesting to music historians that this came in 1928 because as you hear this piece, think about the styles of people like Jerry Lee Lewis and Ray Charles and the early pioneers of rock and roll. You'll hear that it doesn't sound that different 
that different from what Clarence Pinetop Smith was doing around 1928. All right, I've got my high-tech solution set up. Let's see how this sounds. Here's my small version of Pine Top's Boogie Woogie. <laughs> While I gather these pens and pencils out of the piano one by one, I want to share one last brainstorm with you. So we've seen two different ways now to organize these mangoes. <laughs> it's not the best camera work, I know. But there is a third way that a lot of modern jazz pianists use. And I call it shared hand voices. And this is where, instead of holding two mangoes in one hand and one in the other, actually share the chords between the two hands. And there's a really compelling reason to do this. And some of these pens really lodge themselves in here. I think I got them all. Um, the really compelling reason to do this is that as we expand harmonies and try to make them more rich and include more color notes, we can grab more notes if we use the inner fingers of both hands. So I want to leave you with uh, one last version of Stars and Stripes Forever. And now I'm going to be using these shared hands voicings. Enjoy. so much for paying attention. You can see all my info here. I hope you like, subscribe, and check out my books. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.